Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Steve Teal, Very Bold Radio and Podcast. Man, I got to come up with some new words. I'm always fired up and I'm excited. Um, there's got to yeah. be a new word. Maybe Ty's got what? What's a word I can use today? Because I always, I am excited to do these interviews with whoever. But I'm, I'm fired up. Give me a word. What's a word I can be today? That's a little different than excited or fired up. You got something oh, for me? You're a lyricist. I'm a. I'm also. I was in a coach's family, so you know, let's go and fired up. All of that was said in my home. So <laughs> that's those are my same thoughts. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, Oh man. I mean, it is just exciting to be here. Yeah. And, and kind of figure it out. Um, um, it's a, a good opportunity, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a blessed one. Um, I so love it. I'm excited just the same as you are. I love it. Well, that's what we are. We're excited. We're fired up. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're talking to Ty Griffin. Um, also known as royalty, hip hop artist, rapper, very gifted, very talented. Got to meet you um, over the phone for our first interview, which was last fall. I think it was in October, maybe. And so it's just great to see you in person or in person, see you over Zoom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also talk about uh, what God is doing with your music, your new music coming out. We're going to talk about family a little bit. We're going to talk about all sorts of different things, changes in your life as far as where you're going to college. I want to find out how, you know, I know what kind of student I was. Not great. Spoiler. Uh, I want to know about you because you've got this music passion. And I, I would imagine it seems to me, I'm guessing that music, knowing your talent is your passion. And so that probably means like academics, it, it probably isn't equal. I'm guessing. Competing for sure. It's competing. <laughs> All right. That's a coach's son right there, man. That's, that's a great answer. So um, catch us up a little bit. Just talk to us first about, um, well, where you're living now, what's going on with uh, a new place. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're me and my brother, we're getting older now. So he's off in college and uh, um, thinking towards the end of last year, I was figuring out if, you know, A&M Corpus and was where, I felt like I needed to stay or um, go up there to William Jewell all the way in Missouri. Um, or all right. We are talking to Ty Griffin, also Royal T, the hip hop artist. And uh, we're just talking about some transitions and moves. You were starting to mention that your brother is at William Jewell. Can you explain why he's at William Jewell? And maybe some people have don't even know where that college is. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, he's up in uh, Missouri right now. Um going to play college football. So, um, you know, and, and kind of dealing with that and seeing uh, both of us kind of leave the house, we're trying to figure out where we're going to go. So, um, yeah, but he's he's up there playing college football. Yeah. So you thought about <clears> – <throat> you were starting to say, so you thought about going up there. Mm -hmm, yeah, I thought about either coming close closer to home, staying where I was, or going up there with, with him at William Jewell. What were the final factors that got you to Texas State? <laughs> I mean, I, it was a long kind of process trying to figure it out. And and really, I think it just came down to sort of the way the schooling was going to work up there. My The credits and the transfer, and it was going to have to be learning a lot of new stuff um, on yeah. how to do my schooling up there. Um, they do it in actually a really great way um, that I think if I started my freshman year, it would have benefited ah. me a lot. Um um, but it was just going to be have to. It was going to be a new learning process for me on okay. top of, of classes and things like that. Um, and then some things were just changing within jobs and and stuff down there in Corpus. Um, so kind of, kind of all the factors came together. Um, and Texas State just felt like the right place for me. It's okay, um, twenty five minutes, something like that, to my house. Um, but just being, I think, being closer to family is 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 a lot better for me um, than to be four hours away. Um, which it was nice to, you know, kind of figure that out uh, by myself and, and yeah, be an adult for a little while. Uh, <laughs> still, still have to be now, but, um, it, you yeah. know, I, like a little bit closer to home, a little bit more contact with, with my parents and helping me figure some stuff out. So, yeah, that sounds good. What uh, you, I, you just raised all sorts of questions for me yeah. that don't matter in the grand scheme, but <laughs> what was your job situation in Corpus? What, I don't remember what you were doing down there. So I, I worked in housing um, 
I was sort of the RA resident assistant. Um, we did a lot of other stuff um, down there on top of the RA um, position that you normally see. Um, but it was getting transferred from the company I was working with to the school. And um, I was just trying to figure out if, you know, if that's where I wanted to stay um, in that job or, you know, maybe look for something else. So um decided to uh, maybe pursue it up here at, at Texas State. Um, the same sort of position. Um, but, you know, I can, still kind of figuring it out right now. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you're at a brand new college to you for, as of, you know, three weeks. So, yeah, there's some stuff yeah. to figure out for sure. All right. Well, you've talked about family. I mean, how important family is. And to me, the fact that you were considering transferring up to your brother's school that he's just starting out and your, your current single, I know you got new music coming out, mm-hmm. is... BIA, which stands for Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms. So, man, talk to me first just about that uh, that song, that track, and your relationship with your brother. Yeah, I mean, I mean, being a coach's kid and moving around the way we did, um, family is kind of like that's all you got at at some yeah. point. Like that that's all you got is your family. Um, so, <clears throat> being part of football and also being part of me and him being a brothers, um, you grow up like that, and it's all about brotherhood. Where you're, whether you're viewing it like as a kid, seeing all those kids um, above you, um, being that locker room, and being brothers out on the field as well as in there. Um, me and Tucker were like that growing up. You know, we fought a lot as kids and and trying to figure it out. Um, but you know, being brothers is kind of your built-in best friend. So. <clears throat> When he was going to college, um, we were trying to, I was trying to figure out maybe I can go up there with him and, you know, room with him. And uh, so, wow, was a cool opportunity to see. Um, So I get, I mean, I guess going back to that moving kind of the whole thing was really family getting closer to family. Um, But yeah. yeah. Well, um, talk to me about when you guys were growing up and stuff I, and just a little bit of perspective. We're going to, and this ties into your, your song, obviously, but, um, um, it would seem to me, you know, my dad was a military officer, so I don't have that coaching sort of experience. Mm-hmm. He got to coach a little bit, uh, for a couple of years, but, um, it does seem like it would sometimes feel like kind of us against the world, like yeah. uh coaching life is a weird sort of life and i know from ministry like people look at you and it's it's kind of a fishbowl experience but football is so man so public like if you win you win if you lose you right. lose and usually when you lose um i mean it's like man i wish the coach would have done this or you know the players make mistakes so what was that kind of mentality of your family how did you stay strong i mean i guess that would make you strong but how did you guys stay united I mean, I think the the central point of it was was God and our and our love for Jesus and our faith um, that strengthened our family um, as we were moving along and and you know going through tough times or you know whatever um, even highs like sometimes sure. when it it's great you kind of forget about everything and and take it for granted. So I think the central point um, was knowing God and knowing who He was and and Him being a part of our family. I think that was a big thing. Um, they, you know, you don't always see all the time. Um, so, um, sort of the mentality was, was just, it's, it's not us or them, but like, I'm, I'm sticking with my family, yeah, hundred uh, percent of the time, always standing behind yeah. them. So, yeah. <clears throat> when I think about my own relationship with my sister, who is three years older, you are how many years older than Tucker? How, what are you? Two, two years. Two years. Okay. All right. So when I think about my sister, we, we fought a bunch, you know, growing up like a bunch for me, it kind of, for us, it sort of pivoted when she went away to college and then it's like, Oh, I actually missed my sister. And, you know, and, and that's when our relationship kind of started to get strengthened. Um, what about for you? Was it different? What was it? Oh, it was, it was the exact same. Um, and kind of leading up to my, the end of my senior year, I started feeling that realizing like I'm not going to I'm going away in just a, just a couple months um and I always have that opportunity to come back but it's not going to be the exact same it was just living there every single day um so I think it was around that time where 
you know, we started investing a lot more in each other um, because we knew what was coming. And then after, you know, after I moved away, some of the, you know, best times going back to my family and, you know, you don't really know what you have until it's gone. Kind of the cliche thing, but it's very true, even in the sense in family, um, you know, you don't always realize what to be grateful for until you're away. And and then, you know, it's, it's even kind of a blessing being away for some time because that, that moment you're back with them, it's so much more special um, than you previously thought it was. Yeah, that's that. That is really cool. What um, what does your relationship with your brother look like now? I mean, what does it look like now? I mean, you're writing songs inspired by brotherhood. I mean, he's got to love that. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you know, being away like that, it makes you think about like a lot of those times of um, of fight, and then just like it, it made no sense being mad at each other <laughs> for a long time. Um, because because we did like we're we're the only people that we felt like we could depend on a lot of the time because you know moving from place to place you don't have the same friendships they yeah. don't age right like you can yeah. be in a year um so me and my brother we had each other um and so now that we're that we're away you know we're we talk every day we don't tend to fight like at all anymore it's just being grateful for <laughs> you know the time together and having fun and you know um, not having a home family was really our home, you know, yeah. growing up. And we started to realize that now. Um, and it's kind of taken on full effect. So, um, yes. you know, we're really happy with each other now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good, you know, all right. All right. All right. I'm going to let's, let's like roll. Cause I, I love the photo, you know, you got a couple of photos. I think I've seen of you and your brother when you're much mm-hmm. younger included kind of as some of the art uh for bia brother brothers in arms um but let's let's like unveil what was uh some kind of little crazy fight you guys had i mean what comes to mind when you think about a scrap that uh you and tucker had oh man uh, every every day every day, uh, every day. Online, you know we go out and you know a lot of times it came from sports and you know wrestling and then we get mad and you know, it just becomes physical. We start, you know, hitting on each other. And, um, but, you know, you know, some of those were just outside playing football and, and, you know, somebody scores a touchdown, the other one doesn't like it, you know, playing basketball, the same thing. Um, right. And me and him, you know, we're competitive with each other growing up in that family. And um, so we're a little bit fiery when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> of those fights revolved around just – sports and, and yeah. being, living outside and, and having fun just turned a, a little bit yeah. the wrong way. Right. Who is the most competitive of the two of you? And then I'm going to ask who's the most competitive in your family. You got a lot of competitors. Uh, I would, it's Tucker for sure. Uh, <laughs> Cause he's kind of across the board, you know, I'm competitive in certain, certain things um, okay. that I'm passionate about, but he's always competitive and you know, that makes him, you know, that allowed him to go play college football. So it's, it's a good thing um, to have. Um, my dad's obviously, obviously very competitive football coach. Yeah. Um, so, but most competitive is Tucker for sure. Out of the whole family. Yeah. And, and, and okay. everybody knows it. All of us, <laughs> our friends and family. Yeah. It, Tucker. He's got to win at everything. So if y'all are playing Uno or something, I mean, he's got to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's the What's the family game that you guys might play or something that could get a, a little bit out of hand? Do you guys ever do that, or is it all just revolved around basketball and football and things like that? It's mostly the sports. When it comes to games, I, Tucker gets competitive, but not all the time. Okay. Um, so, you know. I'm more competitive at like the games, the the board games or the family games or stuff like that. Um, oh, okay. One that one that we do get competitive though um, is uh, the Pictionary thing. That yeah, one, yeah. We we all get pretty fiery on that one. <laughs> stressful time. Stressful time. <laughs> it's fun, but it's stressful at the same time for sure. Okay, that's awesome. I love it. All right, well, what does he think about this this track, man? It's a great track, great song. Um, when he heard it for the first time or knew that you were writing it, I mean, this is like about you guys, you know? So what did he think or has he said? 
Yeah. Um, you know, riding with it, I had that in mind of the idea of where we where we came from and and the experience over the last couple of years of moving away. Um, so I, I sent him one of the verses to it that I was writing and I was like, hey, do you like this? Is it like something that I would want that we could put out? Um, Cause I know it, it some, if he doesn't want to put it out, I wasn't going to. So, you know, I kind of asked his permission first, like, is this cool? Like you think this would be nice and he was all for it. So, um, you know, I think, I think he likes the track, loves it. Um, and so we kind of had that talk before I put it out. Like, is this something that's cool? If Like if I put it out, um, and then the the day I actually recorded it was the same day he was going to college. It just happened to oh. work out. So the day I was in the studio recording it, the same moment, you know, he was flying out to college. So it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a, a thing that felt like it, it was supposed to happen. So it, it just made sense in the long run. Wow. That, um, that almost seems like that could be emotional when you were recording it. I mean, you know, it, there's already emotion behind it, but then you're thinking about him going, you know, going north yeah. a little bit. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about what other music, what, what else is coming up? What's been going on? You know, you've got all these great songs and uh, this talent and ability that God has given you. So what's going, what else is going on? Yeah. I mean, I mean, more than ever, I'm writing a lot of music, making a lot of tracks. Um, but this, the expanded edition of, of Mask On was kind of something I wanted to do right when I put it out. I mean, the the cover of the mixtape I made the same day I made the other one, the original one. So it was kind of the vision that I had for it was to put something out. You know, I didn't know when or how many tracks it was going to be. Um, but I felt like these couple of tracks, BIA, Delilah, and Eagle was the last one. Um, I feel like they fit the mood in the mixtape that makes sense to be put in there. Um, but they're also going to kind of transfer into whatever comes next um, uh, for the music. Because um, I'm doing a lot of writing and it's all at the same time. So it'll it'll make sense in the future when you kind of see back and and this is sort of the transition period from um, Act One to you know whatever's coming next. So okay, all right, uh, BIA Delilah. What was the third track you said? The Eagle. second Eagle. All right, all right. So what kind of transition? What is what does this feel like? What does it look like? I know when we're gonna hear it, we're gonna understand, but you know, explain for us. So yeah, the the it also not as it's not only a transition period for the next stuff, um, but it also kind of caps off mask on as a, as a project um, mm. from the, the album cover. I got the inspiration to do these kind of songs and, and figure it out when I was making the original one. Um, I kind of divided it into three sections and you can kind of hear it musically how it's divided. Yeah. Um, and the first part of it um I think it was first three tracks and now come it'll be four tracks um, once the expanded edition comes out. They're kind of what I felt like was expected of me when I was making Bounty and when I was making Behind the Curtain. That was kind of like what I felt musically was what people expected or wanted or sort of a reflection of what I was hearing in music at the time. Um, now, the subject matters are a little bit different, um, but musically, it, it was sort of that kind of direction um and then the second part of it was sort of the relatable part it was about um you know prideful the song prideful it's about pride i mean pretty mm. straightforward and your soul was about happiness it was about you know chasing after that thing and how it it just comes and goes um so um and then the third portion of it was those those last three songs um and that was what i felt like i wanted to make felt like more me when I was making those songs. Um, so coming out with this expanded edition, um, I was sort of inspired by the cover art of how it's flipped upside down. Um, so I made three songs to go into these three sections. Um, and now the, the way the songs are kind of put into order or is a little bit different. So BIA felt like more me. It was more of the songs that I wanted to make. Okay. Um, but it's going in that into that section 
at the top that doesn't feel like me to sort of reflect the cover art. So, um, and then Delilah's going into that middle section. Um, it'll fit into that area of prideful and emotions and relatability and, and, and striving for something that maybe you shouldn't spend your time on and instead of, you know, pointing out to something else. Um, and then Eagle fits in, is, is in that last court category um, where I felt like it was an expectation of what music had to be. Um, <clears throat> but it's in that last section just to reflect that, you know, that cover art. Um, so the, the three tracks really kind of divide themselves up into the three sections of the actual, like, mixtape itself so it'll it'll be a nice cap off when you listen to it and and hear the fluidity of 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 what's going on in that mixtape dude you are an artist man (laughs) you are a true artist like just hearing you like all your different thoughts about what's me and what's this and what's that and what was expected of you i mean you to me you seem like a an artist like a deep thinker and you're just everything has uh, sort of a purpose and everything. I mean, that's that's really cool. I don't know. You got any comments off of that? And that's... I mean, I, I, growing up, like music was was a huge thing for me. Um, just to kind of figure out where I was and the reality of where I was, and music was a constant when a lot of other things were not constant in my life. Um, so I wanted I the same thing I saw in music. I want to pour out into it because it, it just makes sense. Uh, of of how i want to do it um so when 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 i make music it's it's kind of it's meticulous it's planned it's kind of thought out just because you know that's that's what i liked to see in music where the the albums that were specific and conceptual and and had a story with it so um i definitely want to put the same thing that into music that i got out of it yeah so when you were listening to an album um was it something that you were interpreting like you're you're listening to another album when you're growing up and you're like man the story is this or i see these themes kind of woven in or was it something that was would be obvious for anybody because the artist is saying here's the theme you know what i'm asking yeah i I mean think i think it was sort of it had a veil in front of it yeah Um, because i think a lot of people listen to music kind of casually um yeah yeah, most of us i do the same thing um but what but stuff that really kind of inspired me and and i related to it had that sort of theme that was a little bit a layer deep that you kind of had to dig and and find out and that's something that that i do in my own music that i look for in other people's music yeah. When I hear an album, I'm kind of digging through there and, and seeing the similarities and yeah. what, what song are they calling back to and what are they trying to, you know, convey with the message of this song. And uh, I mean, it goes back to those inspirations of when I was younger and listening to a lot of these huge guys that that make music. Um, yeah. Uh, who? Very creative in their process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you remind me just some of those influences that really like struck you as like, that's, that's where I want to aspire to be kind of mm-hmm. that sort of artist. I mean, when, when, when I was younger, you know, music was a lot different. Um, okay. It's kind of changed over the couple of years, but oh. Lecrae, Lecrae was huge, yeah. um, huge in my life. NF was another big one. Um, Eminem. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. huge part of the musical journey that I was growing up in. Um and then also just hearing music in the weight room and, and the different styles and kind of figuring that out. Um, Kendrick Lamar was a huge mm. one for me too. Um, and I think now as I've gotten older, it hasn't changed, um, but it's become a lot deeper. Um, mm. A lot of those or the guys who were coming up in music, a lot of those who were creating music when hip hop wasn't even a thing, it was, they were creating Oh. Yeah, so uh some of those guys um growing up creatively when they were making hip hop as a genre, um they they inspired my music a lot just because they were sitting there creating it, something that hadn't been done before. Um and a lot of those newer guys now um 
sort of in the Christian hip hop space, Holvey and Indie Tribe and um, Caleb Gordon, they're kind of making a new wave type of music. Um, okay. And it's inspiring to see like young guys a little bit older than me, sort of like mentors and some like my age coming out and rapping and being really good and also, you know, spreading the word. Um, so, you know, there's a, a whole list of, of, new inspirations that are coming out while I'm also really big into the old kind of style of music, loving the, the boom bap and, you know, the very breakbeat type of music. I love that just as much as I'm, I'm loving this kind of new stuff. And it's all, all of it is inspiring. Um, when you kind of hear it, especially me for musical mind, listening to it, especially hip hop, which is what I loved listening to growing up. So, um, you know, there's a lot of inspirations, young and old, right now, uh, especially in the the Christian hip hop space. It's kind of taken off. Okay. Uh, so, a lot of new guys that are really, really good. Man, that's really encouraging, right? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, seeing people listen to these guys, where whereas when I was younger, people didn't really like he. You know, Lecrae was huge, but there's a lot of people who were like, "Man, we don't want to listen." to that because he's talking about God. Um, and I think that perception in hip hop has kind of changed a little bit um, where people are wanting to hear about that. And they like people who hear about that. You know, a lot of people think if, if they talk about God, their, their music is not going to get played on radio or, in, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just because of what they're seeing. But I, th- I think now we're kind of seeing people listen to that and artists are figuring in that out. So there's a lot of sort of ownership going back to the artists where they're making their own art instead of, I guess, what people expect from them to make. So yeah, it's, it's a whole new wave. And um, I'm kind of sitting back looking at that as a smaller writer, artist now. And that's kind of what I'm projecting to. That's what I want yeah. to be is, is someone who makes my own art and not just, you know, what people expect from me. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I like that now. A small artist now. Come yeah. on, world, watch <laughs> out, man. Watch out for Royal T. Watch out for Ty Griffin. He's coming. He's that's coming. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's where your competitiveness really comes out. I think you've said. I mean, you want to be the best rapper. I mean, you know. Uh, however, you finish that sentence. I want to be the best rapper. I mean, I want to be the best rapper ever. That's the mentality when you go and, and yeah. you get in the booth. If you're not thinking that way, it it doesn't come out the way yeah. you, it's not received the right way. Um, and while that competitiveness and that tenacity is going on, um, it's also just like giving glory to God. Like, I want to be the best in my field because of who he is and, mm. and what he's done in my life. And um, so when I think about that um music is really the most competitive of anything that i've ever done like that's where i really want to excel and and i have a passion for and you know i there was a lot of things that i did growing up where i didn't really have it uh that passion for it so getting into music and finally recording and getting into a booth i mean it when you're in the booth it changes your whole personality and demeanor like um there's one goal in mind and you want to get to it like now. So yeah, that's That's, sort of mentality going forward all the time. That's good. That's good. I really like that because I mean, you could have finished that sentence, you know, a different way. Like uh, I want to be the best rapper I can be. I want to be, you know, the best rapper, but you're like ever. And then I like how you, you know, shown the light on because of what God has done in your life. Can you just close out in the last few minutes? And man, I don't know. I, I had several questions about Delilah and, uh, and Eagle, but um, you know, I'm, I've got one eye on the clock cause we got maybe, maybe we can make this last seven yeah. more minutes maybe. Um, but, uh, and I'll keep an eye on the, on the clock, but um, we'll talk to us uh now that I'm focused on the watch, I forgot what I was just talking about. Delilah, Eagle, and um, well, what God has done in your life like lately. I know last last year we talked about some of your testimony and stuff, but what is God doing right now that you are trying to share through your music? You know, really, it's, it is it is that factor of bringing glory to him. 
Um, mm. I've seen in my art a lot in and I, you'll kind of see it in in Eagle and, and Delilah and these kind of things. They're pulling from a place of my relationship with God and, you know, my reality of the situation, because that's what I want to, you know, kind of give is is relatability. And right. I want to rap about my life, um, but it's not separate from God at all. He's in it, working in the midst. Um, and the whole reason why I'm, I'm, I'm doing it today, why. You know, I'm thankful to get up in the morning and, and and continue. So um like he that's he's in the music. And that's what I'm seeing more and more is is the music is becoming more about him, more God focused. Um and it's getting better. Like I if I if I don't like it, I'm not gonna put it out. If it's not beating the last one, it's not coming out. So um, I really enjoy the music that I'm making and I see God's hand in it, and you know, that's what the whole that's what yeah. everything's about. Yeah. How exciting to be able to say, like, it's getting better. You know, I mean, because you said you're writing a lot mm -hmm. and you're feeling like it's getting better. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, making Bounty, like, I didn't know that it was going to be the sort of the hit it was in, mm -hmm. in the community that I was in and, and for a lot of places, right? Like, there's some plays that I get that aren't even in this country. And that's, that was crazy to see. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just going to be me and my friends hanging out and like, we yeah. made a song and that was cool. And maybe we'll like rap together or whatever. Like I thought yeah. it was just going to be like a little fun thing, but you know, recording for the first time and, and putting it out like a passion kind of developed and it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, it, it's great to to see the music getting better and, and something that I want to pursue a lot more than I, I ever thought I was going to. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, your pursuit of this, are you right now, like, I, I don't know what you're, I don't remember what you're studying in college. And, you know, we just touched on before, like this, uh, this I see a true passion. So I don't mm -hmm. know how school is you know, just something that, Hey, we got to do, I'm going to go ahead and get that degree. But my passion is to pursue this. I mean, it, it, it is, um, my school is very important to me. Like I, I want to, okay. not only do I want to get it done as fast as I can so that I can do the art. Like this is also another, um, passion that I see myself enjoying. And that's something that a lot of people don't get to do is, is they work their jobs, but they don't always enjoy it. Right. Um, so coming into college, I wanted to I wanted to do something that I enjoyed, um, that I have a passion for. Um, so I'm right now I'm studying aquatic biology and I'm I'm looking into, uh, into fisheries. So um a line of work that really I don't know a ton about. And I'm learning about it in the next couple of years, you know, through my schooling. Um, but something that I could see myself doing and enjoying. Um, while being able to pay to make, you know, pay for the resources to make my music good. Um, if, if you don't have any resources to make your music good, it's really hard for people to listen to that. And, yeah. there, and, and people do see the genuineness and, and the realness in your music, even if it's not produced well. Um, but I want to make sure that I continue to make, you know, not just what I'm selling, but what I'm making and and giving to people the same way i received it from music you know yeah. i want to keep making it better and better um for myself just as much as anybody else yeah that's good man that's good all right a couple minutes left talk just a little bit if you can about delilah or eagle delilah man what's what's the scoop can you give us a little yeah. scoop or absolutely uh, yeah. delilah is sort of a very creative song it kind of fits into that realm of of pride for your soul where it's much different than the other rap stuff that i'm doing um and a lot of work went into making the actual music for it um yeah a lot of times i work with samples and things like that so it was really fun making the song creative yeah, good um, but the, but the message short of it, it comes straight from samson um and wow! That passage of Samson and Delilah and and uh, their relationship and his relationship with God. So it's it's directly from that story. Now it's pulling on a little bit of um, outside sources of you know creative sources and things sure. in my own life, but it's kind of that culmination of of that 
that story that we heard growing up as kids yeah. in church. And if you haven't, you're about to hear it in this song. Um, and you can go check that out um, right where it is. So, um, and then it, it's just a, it's just a very interesting song that yeah. didn't really know if it was going to turn out the way it did, but when it did, I, man, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it really, a really cool song that people are going to kind of adhere to. Yeah. Remind me like the re- release date of this. I mean, so it's going to be coming out next Friday. So one next week, Friday, it's, it's going to be coming pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and I'll be, I'll be posting on social media and get people into it. So, um, you know, pre save has been up for a week. So that kind of stuff is out there. Um, but it, it's coming out really soon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. That, uh, man, that remind you know, this may not air for, uh, as a podcast for a little while. So we'll, mm-hmm. uh, we'll try to get some video clips going so we can get it, awesome. get it out there too. Um, man, really exciting. All right. Uh, that, that's really cool. I mean, that really intrigues me, you know, to take something like a Bible story and take inspiration and creativity like that, that is going to be fascinating. That is going to be yeah. fun. So an Eagle, can you just talk about that for a minute and then we'll close, we'll close up shop. Eagle, um, it, it's a, it's a fun song. It's, it's one that'll get you pumped up. It's like a okay. ready, ready to go to war song. Um, oh. it kind of pulls off of this, uh, genre of drill music of, of, you know, it has a certain particular when you hear the song, you know, it's it's in that genre um, and just one that's really fun making it beat wise. It's, it's really fun making those songs. Yeah. And I've kind of try, tried to make them in the past, put my own spin on it with Havoc and and Sunshine. And yeah. they're sort of drill songs, but this is the first true one that I'm doing and that I really enjoyed making. It's a longer song, um, but it, it's a really fun one. And and that is is mostly is mostly about faith and it has a lot of bars in it and it's 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 an easy casual listen because it has those bars and things in it like it's yeah. it's a little snappy it's witty and it's fun to hear but there's a layer deep of it when you really get into the lyrics and, and kind of figure it out so um you know i'll have the lyrics posted on there too because that's something i do i go and read and and stuff like that so um, they'll be up right when the album comes out so love it man this is real exciting um all of it but it's also just exciting just the the artist that he's that god has made you to be and that you're developing and um, the passion that you have for it and the passion you know if you don't have the passion for god it's just gonna be a you know a different right. ball game so um man it's just exciting dude it's just yeah, I'm, exciting. I'm ready i'm ready We're- for it to come out we're closing this interview just like we started. We're fired up. Let's go. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Excited. Well, do you have anything, uh, just last last words you want to say before we sign off? I mean, just be ready for it to come out. Look, you know, look on the socials. And and uh, I think it'll be really fun for people to hear. Um, yeah. You know, thank you for having me on, be able to talk about it and talk about my faith. and Thank and my you. Life, so, thank and, you for being yeah. on. Thank you for being on. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to in a couple of years where it's I can't get a hold of Ty, man. He's not returning my calls. <laughs> yeah, I, I love to bring it back to basics, so you know, there, there's no telling. Oh man, it's it's really great. Well, I just I'll sign off by saying this. First of all, that's royalty. Thank you, Ty Griffin. Uh, find him on Spotify. Find him on the socials, and uh, be sure to listen to this album. Um, you're gonna like it. You're gonna love it. If you don't, if it's just not your thing, then share it with somebody who it is because there's a lot of talent. I feel like if you appreciate music, you're going to appreciate it just because there's so much artistry behind it. Even if that's just not their genre, uh, man, take a listen. Check Check this out. Um, really, just a lot of talent coming through, and God is coming through it. Um, so it's just exciting. And I just ask your prayers for royalty for Ty, um, just as he continues to pursue God and pursue this this craft, this artistry that he's been given as a talent he's entrusted with, and he's developing. He's doing everything he's supposed to do, and he's keeping eyes first um on god so man just just excited fired up brother so i will tell people as we sign off we're very bold radio on podcasts we're very bold ministries and that is because 
just like Ty has been talking about, it's what God has done for us. It's who God is for us. That then that kind of just is the platform. It's the launching pad for everything. Like remembering Christ, what he did for us, that he died for us, that he gave Ty gifts, that he gave you gifts, um, that he loves you, that he's forgiven you, all those things. Then it's like, okay, God, what do you want to do? What do you want to create with me? And maybe it's relationships that you're supposed to create. Maybe it's hip hop that you're supposed to create. Maybe it's something else that you're supposed to create opportunities for other people, whatever it is, God is inviting you. He is the ultimate creative and he wants to be involved with you in it and enjoy it um, with you. And he's enjoying every step of the way with Ty and he wants to do it with you as well. So what's that look like, man, get to the creative to God and say, what's that look like? And let him speak to you. All right. Ha, that was a parenthesis. Second <laughs> Corinthians 3.12. This is why we're very bold. The apostle Paul, he got it. Ty gets it. Do you get it? The Apostle Paul said this, 2 Corinthians 3.12, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold.